This is lecture video 30 and in this lecture we start a brand new chapter which is chapter 5 titled integration. Let me say a few things about integration first and we will continue with the first section of this chapter. So a great achievement of classical geometry was obtaining formulas for the areas and volumes of triangles, circles, volumes of spheres, cones, for example. These are very really nice shapes that we know the formula of how to compute their areas and volumes. What if the shape is not that nice, for example, like this? So for computing the area of such a general region, we need integral. And in this chapter, we develop a method to calculate the areas of vol and volumes of very general shapes like this. This method called integration is a tool for calculating much more than areas and volumes. In fact, the integral is of fundamental importance in statistics, science and engineering. And in this chapter, we focus on the integral concept and use it in computing areas of various regions with curved boundaries like this. OK, so um, let me go into more details. As I said, if you are computing, for example, the area of a circle, or let's use half circle, for example, like this one, and let's say it's reduced one. So this is a very nice shape that we know how to compute its area. By the way, the circle's equation is given like that. And the area of it is, of course, pi r square over 2, where r is being 1, the radius. OK, so because we know how to compute the area of a circle through this formula, it is so easy for the circle. But what if, as I told you, what if we have general curves like this and still want to compute the area under it. This time, of course, we don't have a nice formula like this, but we start approximating this area by these rectangles. And uh, in the next section, we will find a way to find, or we will find a way how to use these approximating rectangles to obtain the exact area. Okay, let's... Um, Co concentrate on this figures. In the first figure, this is our curve, this is our region, and we want to compute the area of this region. And the idea is we will use approximating rectangles. Approximating rectangles to estimate the area. For example, in the first figure, you see two approximating rectangles uh, where this is the base of them. The base is one half, the same for the two approximating rectangles. And you are using, OK, how do we create these rectangles? In this first picture, we are using the left end points to draw the height. What I mean is, this is the left end point of the first interval, right? So we decided to use two approximating rectangles. That's why we divided the interval into two equal parts, two equal subintervals. So, uh, and now we are saying that we will be using the left end points to construct the height, to draw the height. So this is the left end point of the first uh, interval. I go up till the curve and you see this is my height now determined by the curve and but now this is the base this is the height and I can easily create a rectangle like this right and let's try to apply this strategy for the second interval so this is the left hand point of the second interval so I go up till the Curve, this will be the height now of the second rectangle. And then over the space with this height, you can easily create your rectangle like this. 
And if you sum up sum the areas of these rectangles, it will give you an approximation for the area under this curve, but uh, there will be errors, of course. You see, these parts are extra parts. So uh, this approximation is not that good because it has these error parts. Here we use left hand points to create approximating rectangles. And uh, let's look at the second picture. This time we are using more rectangles. We decided to use four approximating rectangles and that's why we divide the base into four sub intervals of equal length like that. And we again use the left hand points construct a height. So this is the left hand point of the first interval. That's why starting from here, I go up till the curve. This will be the height of the first rectangle. And then you create your rectangle like this over that base with that height. Second interval, choose the left hand point, go up till the curve and create your rectangle. Left hand point, this is height. Create your rectangle, left hand point of the last interval. And this is the last approximating rectangle. And as you can see, again, we use left hand points to construct the heights. Let's indicate that. Left hand points are used. Still, we have some errors. You see, these are extra parts. So the sum of the areas of the rectangles will be, of course, bigger than the exact area. So this is just an approximation, okay? And since in these two cases, the uh, approximation is bigger than the exact area, approximation is obviously bigger than the exact area. That's why we call them as the upper sum. Okay, for the last two rectangles, this time we decided to use right hand points instead of left hand points. Okay, so th these are the sub intervals of equal length. We divided into four sub intervals. This time, instead of using left hand points, we are using right hand points. You see, over this right hand point, you draw the height. That's why this is your first rectangle. Draw the height, draw the height, draw the height. So you see, you create the rectangles by using right hand points like this. So in this picture, right hand points are used. And um, you can see that there, are, th there is still an error here. So these parts are error parts. And as you can see, the uh, some of the areas of the rectangles is less than the exact area this time. That's why we call it as the lower sum, okay? And um, I want to emphasize that right hand points are used to create these rectangles. And look at the last one. This time we will be using the midpoints to create our rectangles, okay? So midpoints of the intervals are used to create the rectangles. That's why, okay, how, how do you create the rectangles here? These are the bases. You choose the midpoints, go up till the curve. This will be the height and you create your rectangle over that base with this height. And similarly for all the others, this is the height, this is the height, this is the height determined by the curve. And then you create your rectangles. Okay, um, so the, as you can see, we can increase the number of rectangles like over here and over here. Here, we, uh, the right hand points are used, uh, sorry, the left hand points are used to create the rectangles. In this case, um, the right hand point are used to create your rectangles. You see there are still errors here, so we, Say, we can say that this is an upper sum because the approximated sum is bigger than the exact area. And this is obviously a lower sum because the approximated area is less 
than the exact area in this case. So it's a lower sum. But we need to notice that the more rectangles you have, the more rectangles we have, the less error we obtain, right? If you increase the number of rectangles, the error term will decrease, obviously. Okay, this is it. Uh, this is the first important observation. Okay, let's move on now. Uh, we will use these ideas to solve this uh, first example here. It says, okay, use rectangles whose height is given by the value of the function at the midpoint. We will be using midpoints of the rectangles. And we will estimate the area under the graph of the given function. <clears throat> For example, with four rectangles, two rectangles. You can choose any number of rectangles you like, okay? So let's do it with four rectangles. f of x, one over x. This is the curve given. So let me draw the graph of one over x function like this, okay? And um, uh, we will be using four rectangles to estimate its area under the curve above this interval. So from one to five, so one to five. Now uh, I will divide this interval into four sub intervals of equal length, one, two, three, four. So these points are then two, three, four. And what does it say? We will be using the midpoints of the intervals to construct the height of our rectangles. So uh, this is the first midpoint. I go up till the curve. This will be the height of the first rectangle. This will be the base. That's why um, you, you will create it like this, okay? Go up till the curve. I mean, this will be the height. This will be the base. So you have to create it like this. Midpoint of the second interval is here. I am using the midpoints to create the rectangles. Midpoint is here, go up till the curve. When you touch the curve, it will give you the height of the approximating rectangle, so like this. And do the same over here. This is the height of the third rectangle over that base. With this height, you can draw your rectangle easily. And finally, for the fourth one, like, uh, sorry, fourth one is like this. Okay, and now I will be computing the areas of these rectangles and summing them up to give an approximation to the area under this curve over this given interval from one to five. Okay, let's uh, find the height. So the first height is here. What is it? It is given by the value of the curve at this point. What is this point? This point is the midpoint between one and two. So it is three over two. And similarly, this is second midpoint is five over two, third midpoint is seven over two, and fourth midpoint is <clears throat> nine over two, of course. And the first height is the image of this function evaluated at this point, which is the midpoint of the first one. And continuing this way, this is f of five over two, here you see, this is f of seven over two and the last side is here. And this is f of nine over two. And our graph is given by this expression. So this is which curve? This is y equals one over x curve. So we are ready now to give an approximation for the area under the curve. We are not finding it exactly. As you can see, there are lots of errors again, but approximately it will be. But you see the length of the base of the of all the rectangles are one because we divided the interval into four sub intervals of equal length. That's why the base times height, I will write so. Base times height of the first rectangle is like this. Base times height of the second rectangle plus base is always one height. One times 
the height of the last rectangle. Now it is easy to find these images because we know the function. Uh, it is given as one over x. So this is one over three over two. And this is one over five over two, one over seven over two, one over nine over two. Okay. So let me also indicate that this is the base. These ones are the height of the rectangles. So like this. The, the, the number that you find in the right hand side, okay, what is this number then? It is 2 over 3 plus 2 over 5 plus 2 over 7 plus 2 over 9. This is an approximation for the exact area of your curve now. Okay, so let me also emphasize that you have error terms here. I mean, this is not the exact area, as you can see. That's why we are putting this approximately equal sign here. Okay, let's move on. Um, average value of a non-negative continuous function. Uh, we have a function g of x here, okay? And the average value of a function on a closed interval is what? Is, okay, for example, let's talk about the average value of g function g average is given by the area under the curve, area under the curve divided by the length of the interval, okay, which is b minus a. This gives us the length of the interval used in the graph. Okay, th this expression gives us the average value of g. Value of g over the interval a, b. Okay, we will revisit this topic soon enough. For now, let's continue with the next example. This time what we want to do. We want to use a finite sum to estimate the average value of a given interval of a function on a given interval into four subintervals. This is an important detail for subintervals of equal length, and we will be using midpoints again. In fact, we saw a very similar exercise here. I will be solving quickly this one. So its function is also so similar for over x. It was one over x in the previous example. So let's quickly handle it. This is the curve, okay, and 2, 18 is the interval. So let's say this is 2 and this is the point 18. We will divide this interval into four sub-intervals, okay? 1, 2, 3, 4. So it will go like 4, uh, 2, 6, and 14, we will be using the midpoints of the interval. So 4, 8, 12, and 16 are the midpoints. Now I start creating my rectangles. <clears throat> this is the height of the first rectangle because midpoint is used. Then I start creating it like that. Similarly, this is the height of the second in 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 rectangle. Base is known, so you create your rectangle like this. Height is here. Base is known, so this will be the third rectangle midpoint. Height is given by the curve. You go up till the curve to find out what the height is and like that. Okay. And then I am ready now to write an approximation for the area under the curve. I will just Right, the sum of the areas of these rectangles. So what are the heights? The first height is given by the image of this function. Recall that this curve is 4 over x curve. And uh, so the first height is f of 4, of course. Second height is given by f of 8. This is the height of the third rectangle, f of 12. And you see, this is the last height given by f of 16, right? And you see all the bases are equal length, like 4, 4, 4, 
these are the lengths of the sub intervals now i am ready to write an approximation for the area it is approximately the sum of the areas of these four rectangles for all of them base is four height of the first rectangle is four base times the height of the second rectangle height of the third rectangle base times height of the fourth rectangle we divide into four sub intervals remember so this value is four times f of four f of eight f of twelve f of sixteen okay what is f of four it is given by this function right this is one this is one over two okay this is one over three and this is one over four if you sum up these numbers and multiply it with four so what do we obtain here it is four times one plus one over two one over three one over four so the result is this number is 22 over three so the area is approximately this number what we want to find is in fact something else we want to find the average value of f over that interval so we give an estimation for the area all we need to do is to divide by the length of the interval the area should be divided by the length of the interval to give an estimation for the average value so f average is approximately we you know the expression for the average value area divided by the length of the interval uh, which is 18 minus 2 you know this is the length of the interval that's why it is 22 over 3 over 16 which is yeah you can leave it like this okay that's all about uh, how we use rectangles to estimate areas under the curves uh, you can use either midpoints or left hand points or right hand points to create your approximating Rectangles, one more important remark is that the more rectangles you have, the less error you obtain. And I stop here for this lecture video.